Bless the Lord somebody. <laughs> praise God. Come on, give God a praise in here. Hallelujah to be here with you one more time to share the gospel of Christ. Praise God. And to keep the praise going in the house, you believe, as we praise the Lord. His presence, his atmosphere, fills the atmosphere and it's, we are able to feel that tangible presence and move into a greater realm of fellowship and communion with the Lord. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad. You're here to rejoice and to bless the Lord. I'm here to do the same and I believe that as we do so together, word of God said it is a good thing. We are to earth, we are gathered touching anything in his name. He's in the midst of them. And that's the most precious thing that he is in our midst. Amen. Praise God. Come on, just lift those hands to the Lord and just acknowledge his presence in here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for another day. Thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to be here one more time. To lift up your praise unto your holy name. That we be used as instruments for righteousness. Instruments of honor for your glory. And we submit ourselves afresh to you, Lord God. And yield to your will for our lives today. As you have declared and purpose to do. Let it be done so in our lives today. We yield to your authority. We yield to your presence, to your anointing. We yield to your word, hallelujah, to order our steps and to keep us in line with what we are predetermined to do, that it will be done well and with glory and praise to your name. And now let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. You are Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. We give you the praise and the glory as we claim the victory in Jesus' name. Come on, give him the praise. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to give some praise to the Lord and get the heart pumping and the place filled with the atmosphere of praise. Now, so, hallelujah. Well, come on. Come on, put those hands together. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship is on our call. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Come on. Every word of worship is on our call. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God, my Savior, God, my healer, God, my deliverer, yes, he is, yes, he is, God, my Savior, God, my healer, God, my deliverer, yes, he is, yes, he is.
sing with joy to the Lord. You're not ashamed to praise him. Praise him in the house. Yeah, every praise, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship is one of God. Hey, every praise, every praise is to our God. Oh, come on, sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. Hey, glory, hallelujah. Open the eyes of my heart, hey, 
You're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. <laughs> Devil would want you to feel like you're alone. But God is with you. He's not left you in this to swim or sink. Hallelujah. But he's telling you, I am the God that cannot fail. I'm watching over you. His eyes are on a sparrow. <laughs> and he's watching over me. Come on. Both day and night. In him we have 24-7 security. For the Lord our God is with you. And if he's with you, who can be against you? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on, worship him in the house. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Oh, hallelujah. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Oh, come on. Devil might be threatening you with all kinds of things to push you back, but keep your eyes upon the Lord. Your help comes from him. The meek of heaven and earth. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, lift those hands and declare it. I shall not die. But live and declare. Works of the Lord. Amen. Whoa. I shall not die. Will live and declare the works of the Lord. Hey. Come on, lift those hands and speak the faith. I shall not die. Will live and declare the works of the Lord. Somebody agree, say, I'm in. Oh, 
come on now, stick this. I am not seen <laughs> by stripes, I am here. Glory to God, Amen. That's a faith word, declare it. I am not seen <laughs> by stripes, I am here. Say happen. Praise God. We want to hear some report in the house. Testimonies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm a living testimony. What about you? Praise God. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's praise God. God is good. I'm, I'm rejoicing and giving God thanks for his, his goodness. And when you stand to declare the word of the Lord, you know, you, you have to stand in it and see the results of standing in the word. Um, Last week, I remember I went up to Overton to buy some water um, to put on for the church. And I went up there, and as I brought back the trolley and was on my way down, a man started striking up a conversation with me. And I, I, I didn't know him first. I'm seeing him, but the Lord said, talk with him. So I started entertaining the conversation that he was saying. And he was telling me about young men who don't want to work, but they want to beg money. 
and he invited this young man to come and work with him and said he would pay him $3,000 per day to learn the trade and, and so forth because he's a carpenter. And the young man said, no, he doesn't want to learn any trade. But when the man went out and worked and was coming back, the same young man was asking him for $50. I was like, that's strange. But anyway, um, when, when he started talking, he realized that I was coming on East Street and he was going down, continuing on Union Street. So he stopped and the Lord said, stop with him and talk with him. And then he shared this, this story that that young man went to rob a place and he was shot and killed. And his body is at the, at the morgue right now and it's difficult for the parents to get the body because the bullets are still there and it costs money to take out the bullets. Mm -hmm. I think he said like $45,000 per bullet. And so the Lord said, switch the conversation. So I switched the conversation and I said, yeah, but if you should die right now, where would your soul end up? And he was sharing with me that, you know, I've been doing some good things. I feed the poor. I give, send children to school. And I said, yes, you can do all of that and still not have God. Mm -hmm. And then the man said to me, you know, he was walking and he saw me walking. And the Spirit of God said to him, go and talk to that man. And when he testified to me, he said he wants eternal life. And the Holy Spirit told him to come and talk to me to teach him how to get in. I said, yes, we can teach you. And I started sharing with him about the ministry and where the ministry is located. And he agreed and said he would come. So I'm looking forward to him to this Sunday. But it goes to show that when you're in the word of God, it will show. Jesus mm -hmm. said, by their fruit, you will know them. I didn't say anything to him, but God recommended me to him. Yes. And I praise God for that. And I was praying to the Lord. You know, the devil messed up my finances last week. A lot of things came at me and... I was like kind of frustrated and I said, Lord, you said if we trust you and believe in you and we ask whatever we ask, you will do it. And God said, yes, I give you what you ask for. And the Lord, when I prayed, the Lord said, what you ask for is released. And I saw the person that the Lord told me should come and give me the money. The same night I prayed, I saw the person come to me and put an envelope in my hand. But then the next day, I didn't see anything. And the next day, I'm like, but God, you're not a liar. But then last night, the person came to me, the same person I saw in the vision, came to me and gave me the exact money that I asked the Lord for. And I'm giving God thanks for that. And I told him, thank you for your obedience to God. And as Apostle was saying last night, it is our obedience and humility that secures our position in the kingdom. So right. God is not a liar. And I'm giving God thanks for his provision and for the grace that is on my life. And I came into that grace through this ministry to this man of God. Apostle Richard Fagan. So I'm giving God thanks for that. And I'm giving God thanks that there are greater things coming. Greater things. No matter what the enemy is lurking and splurting and doing. He cannot stop this. God's work will still go on. As David said, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Praise God. Come on, give him the praise. Hallelujah. He didn't want to hear them. What the Lord has been doing. God must do something. Hallelujah. I'm going to say nothing. Nothing done this with you now. Eh? Oh. Praise God. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm so glad to be in the house of the Lord today. And it's been a pleasure um, all the time to know that I'm, the man of God is still here. I mm -hmm. blessings, Pastor and um, Apostle. Yes, yes. Um, blessings. Um, so um, I've realized that in life, the devil uses a strategy at all times. And the main thing that he uses in these times is a spirit of fear. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and I always remember that God said, He's not giving me a spirit of fear, but of power. Love and a sound mind. I used to be fearful of things. I used to be afraid of people saying things bad about me. But I'm a royal priesthood. Once you walk in the presence of God, you're royal. And you're holy. And I've realized that God has not given us a spirit of fear. He said it in Psalm 23. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. And I realized that the devil is using fear against us in this earth. I've seen it so many times. 
And uh, I realized that in order to conquer, you have to be in the house of God to get the strength. Because iron sharp iron. That's right. And I realized that I'm at work every day at work and I'm not in the house of God. And I said, no. Today I'm going to go into the house of God because that's where I get my strength. If the world can go to their dance and enjoy mm -hmm. themselves and strengthen themselves in evil every day, why can't I be in the presence of God so it can change my life? It can turn it around because I've been fearful of leaving certain environment because of fear. But I realize that fear, God has not given us a weapon of fear. He has given us a weapon to be closed for the garment of praise and of worship. And the more you praise God, the more victory you get. The more positive things that you speak about yourself because life and death is in the spirit, is in the top of the tongue. And we have to speak life over our bodies. Life in our hearts, in our mind, in our children, in our family, in our walk with God each day on this earth. Because the enemy has strengthened himself in sin. And sin has sick my stomach. No, I'm, I can't believe I'm talking this. Because I'm, I am tired of sick and being tired of the sin and a whole. Mm. I'm tired of the messy life. I'm tired of fornication. I am tired of lies. I'm tired of deception. I, that's, I'm, I'm just tired of fooling myself in the life of sin. Because mm. God is a conqueror. God, all power is given to God, to us. Mm. Hallelujah. Because he said he has given power over all devils and all demons. Yes, yes. So why am I fooling myself with, it, with fear? Mm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I realize that sometimes when you want something, you know, you have to sow back in somebody's life before you get to get it. And I realize that I said I want a house. But when I look, my mother's, my, my mother's house was not looking appropriate. Mm. So I decided to say, I'm going to fix up my mother's house. And I'm telling the truth. Once I started fixing my mother's house, it's like some things start coming to my vision. And God started showing me that I'm going to get my house yes, because I've been sowing for it and, I'm, and energy is just waiting on me. Just one birth certificate and my pay slip. And I'm still there lingering, lingering, lingering. And still I decide to say, I'm going to sow in my mother's house because when you want something, you have to sow something. And I've even sowed something in the, um, because I know that each time I sow, because the Bible said, bring all the tithes in the storehouse. Prove me today if I won't open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that yes. you won't have room enough for you to receive. That's right. And I have to give God the glory for what he's been doing. Thank you for the words that he's been sharing. Mm -hmm. Right now I'm asking God to clean me out totally so the Holy Spirit can come in because we cannot live without the Holy Spirit. That's right. We will talk with a mouth because words, words that mouth is made to say anything. But when you have the Holy Spirit, it brings back things to your remembrance, things That's that you right. have learned, things what you, you have been taught. Mm. How can you hear the word without a preacher? So you have to come into the house of God, iron, sharpen, iron. And praise this is my word in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God the praise. Hallelujah. Yeah, man, wood not sharp in iron. <laughs> and many of them out there is just wood. And if you link up with wood when you are iron, you just get dull and dull and dull. That's why if an axe, no matter how solid that axe is, if you keep on just chop wood and don't get come back where it is sharp by iron, it will get dull and dull and it take more energy and if you chop down a tree with that axe, you know, see, because the wood not making it sharper. Right, so that's why. So when it says iron chocolate, iron is saying that if you want to increase your faith, you have to connect with people of faith. You can't connect with people of the people of the world is not of faith. They are faith. They were in a lot long time and in the church. But because they are not of faith, that's why they're running down things of the world and telling the Lord to wait till them ready. They are not of faith. Because they don't trust God to do it for them when they come. So they can't go work it for themselves. You get it? Right? So they are living by sight and feeling and they are not deciding to trust God's power to provide for all their needs to come and serve the Lord. And tell the Lord, no, wait, let me go with the things them first and then we will come. That they are idolaters. So I know idolaters have a place in the kingdom of God. So idolaters will not encourage you to have true worship. They will always make excuses not to worship. 
but they'll not truly worship God. And so we want, if you want to be a true worshiper, you have to link with true worshiper. That's why the church is built. Jesus built the church, not as a building, but as a disciple of people he brought together and put structure within the people where he appointed apostles amongst them, prophets amongst them, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the saints to equip them for the ministry, to bring them into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, that there will be no more children tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine, but that they come into the full maturity of Christ, each joint supplying to the other till they come into the full statue of Christ. Huh? And that's what the word is about. So we know what the church is about, but many who out there, they're just guessing what church is about. They think church is about religion, but church is not about religion. Church is a body of people that God is preparing for the new age. A body of people that is preparing for the new Jerusalem, a city that is built by God. And he says that only the righteous will dwell there. Huh? So that's why we prepare ourselves for one. Amen. And that's a good preparation. So we encourage as much people who want to prepare. Prepare. And not left out the door because of what people are saying and what people are going to do. Because at the end of the day, they cannot save you. Only the Lord can. Hallelujah. So serve the Lord with gladness. Hallelujah. All right. We're going to worship him a little bit and then get into the word. We started a bit late, but we are going to get into the word. Hallelujah. And just set the atmosphere for what God is going to do today. Amen. Come on, just me one more time and it's just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, lift those hands to Jesus. I'm no longer a slave to fear Cause I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear Cause I am a child of God Come on now, you unravel me with a melody, you surround me with a song <laughs> of deliverance from my enemies, hey, till all
side of life what would my answer be what would be my portion before the Lord because I was still living in sin and sin brings fear fear of death because after death there's a judgment word of God said there's one appointed to man wants to die but after death comes the judgment and those whose names are not found written in the Lamb's book of life they'll be cast into the lake of fire and he says that is the second death come on somebody there's a second death oh my god but he's the one that took away all my sins and i submitted my life to him committed my way before him and he made something wonderful out of me i know i'm never and we'll never be the same again <laughs> because of what the Lord has done. Come on. You believe it? <laughs> well, because of that, he has put a new nature in me to love righteousness and to hate sin through his son, Jesus Christ and the indwelling of his Holy Spirit. I can now testify with all boldness I'm a child of God because I'm no longer a slave to sin because <laughs> I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to sin because I am a child of God hey. I'm no longer a slave to sin. <laughs> sin doesn't live here anymore. Because I am a child of God. Sin is not a boss for me. I'm no longer a slave to sin. Because I am a child of God. Oh, I am a child of God. Cause I am a child hey, of God. Hey. Cause I am a child of God. Cause I am a child of God. Come on, give him praise and glory. Glory to God. 